Ben Horner for Norwich Boxing, here with Mervyn Turner, so got a chance to bump into you at the kickstop. Yeah, how you doing, Ben? Um, obviously, we spoke about the last show and we've, we've sort of reflected on that. The next show's coming up, 20th of November. Yep, um, thick and fast. It's a big one. It is a big one. Um, Joe, Joe, as, a, as we like to call him, Joe the Hitman Hearn, will be uh, fighting for his first professional title. Can you give us a little more, bit more background on yeah, that? Yeah, listen, one? Joe's had a... As we spoke at the last show, Joe's had a lot of experience in, in the semi-pro and whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, he is a talent. Um, so we're pushing him. We're, we're fast-tracking him. We've given him some hard fights. And it's time to move him up. There's the um, British Classic Challenge belt. Um, <clears throat> it's a promoter's challenge belt. That's exactly what it, yeah. what it says. So, um, yeah, we'll step him up. We're going to give him the rounds. Um, Against a good opponent, you know, um, Marcus Dido, Lido, yeah. um, will not come here to, to lay down. He'll come here to want to take that belt. So yeah. back home, you know, his trainer is a former British champion, um, went on f for world honours. So mm -hmm. you know that it's a good camp. It's a cracking fight, and to think we're doing that in Joe's, you know, yeah. full fight for, yeah, for, is yeah. incredible. Yeah, but when you've got a talent, you've got to push them on. There's no good pissing about like a lot of these promoters and managers and trainers do, you know, get their kids to 10 and 0, 12 and 0, and then step them up and get them beat. Yeah. And then yeah. they're out of the sport. You know, Joe's tough, he's knocking everybody out, apart from that last opponent who, God knows how that guy <laughs> stood up and survived, yeah. but he did, and all credit to him, you know. Um, let's see where we can take Joe. He wants to go forward in that manner. Um, that's what we're about. Good fights, good entertaining fights for yeah. the fans, Good learning, entertaining fights for the boxers and push them forward. Um, also touching on the same show, you've got Craig Poxton. Um, there's talks of a six rounder, if possible. Uh, yep. with yeah, we're looking for a, a six rounder with Craig. Obviously, it's been announced that Craig's got a, an English title shot. <clears throat> That's on the back of you know the, the shows that we've done here. Uh, the kid had a great, great fight against George Jook, which I thought he was very unlucky. Yeah. Their corner were very nervous until that was announced. Um, Craig sustained some inju injuries early in the, in the fight, um, which, to be fair, I think probably edged the fight in Jook's favour by, you know, yeah. a fraction. Yeah. So on that good performance, he had a return after his hand injury, um, a successful return on our show, and he's now fighting for the English. So we're going to give him a six-rounder, um, and prepare him ready for, for the, the title challenge. Um, with that, um, English title fight, all going well, which I'm sure Craig's going to be hard at camp, not only for this one, but for the English fight. Winning that belt could see the English title coming back to Norwich. And Absolutely. With Shamrock Promotions behind him, you, d you don't know where it could go. People in Norwich could see. I think um, Craig is very indicative of, of our stable. You know, yeah. There's a lot of good boxers um, in our stable currently. There's a lot that we're bringing on board that nobody knows about yet. Um, so North of Norwich Boxing is on the up. Yeah. You know, I started this with, with uh, my colleagues here three years ago. <clears throat> and we've grown and we've grown and we've grown. And uh, we've given people opportunities to fight on our shows and go on to British titles. Um, very successfully, Ryan Walsh, you know, uh, we brought Boxer back to Norfolk, he boxed on our shows, he's got what he thoroughly deserves, because yeah. Ryan's a great kid and a great boxer, he's got a British title, he's made history with his brother Liam, only twins to ever hold it at the same time, fantastic, it's fantastic for the area, there's a lot more to come. Yeah, definitely, um, going back to the, the home show again, yep. as we like to call it sort of in Norwich, um, say for Morris, always working hard in the gym, <laughs> unfortunately got a draw, but in some ways how you see him in the gym it's, it's drawn the Listen, best out of him <clears throat> he got a draw um, it will bring the best out of him again um, all this nonsense about the zero and undefeated and all that, that listen that's that's just for the press all right that's just little snapshots that doesn't mean shit in boxing yeah all right good learning fights and pushing a boxer's career forward is what it's about and that draw will do Zafin no harm whatsoever. And Zafin in himself is a great story. You know, Zafin is from the streets. Yeah. 
you know. He was fat, smoked, probably done a few of the yeah. things that we can't talk about on camera. Um, then he found boxing. Um, you know, he, he found boxing, he got, I think he got stopped in white collar fights, but he came back, he trained hard, and he always then got the ambition to be a professional boxer. And um, he kept pestering us and pestering us and pestering us. And in the end, when we thought he was ready, he came into it and he came in ready. Yeah. So um, nah, that draw is going to do him no harm whatsoever. He'll push on from that. Another one what from a white collar background, Billy Bird. Um, oh, Billy, yeah, yeah, yeah. History's all behind him now. He's back to winning ways. Um, yeah, Billy had a little blip down in your call. Um, and it was a little blip. We knew what it was. Um, Billy wasn't right mentally at the time, he was in a bad place for, for, for various reasons and he just didn't do that last bit properly Yeah. and he paid the price and in boxing if you don't do things 100% you pay the price. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know at the end of the day we don't match our lads easy, he was in his 10th, 11th fight at the time so you can't give him some Hungarian or Latvian that's going to you know, you hit him on the shoulder and he falls over holding his leg. Yeah. Um, we don't want that for our kids. <clears throat> so they have to do things right. But he didn't. Pay the price. And in this business, you pay the price. But it's like money in the bank. He came back very successfully and Billy will go on better for it and win champions. It's, he is a champion. It's another one where you say, like, that, that O doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, goes to show we, we've seen what Billy can do and we're still seeing what Billy's learning. So them titles, they're round the corner for him. There's, there's only two boxers in history that have retained their own, Rocky Marciano and, and Joe Calzaghe. Mm -hmm. Bless them both. Um, Mayweather's now up there, so that makes three. If he retires, it makes three. I don't think he's retired yet, so <laughs> that's why I say two. Um, <clears throat> but one of the greatest boxers alive, Muhammad Ali, lost. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, losses are, they make you what you are, they make champions, so, you know, so not worried about that at all, uh, Billy Bird will be a champion, simple as that. Another one who's always been around the Shamrock promotion scene and Sam Sexton. Yeah, Sam, yeah. Ring Rust gone, uh, we don't like to use the term Ring Rust, but oh, it was Ring, ring Rust gone, yeah, ring last rust. fight. Sam was out with a back injury, took him a long time to get over it. Um, Sam seems to have been around forever, but he's yeah. very young for a heavyweight. Yeah. Yeah. You know? He's a Norwich favourite. Um, <clears throat> he's a great ambassador for the sport. you know. And yet, last fight, we, we actually gave him quite a hard fight. That was a tough comeback fight. And he came through with flying colours. You know, that told you everything you need to know about Sam Saxton. You know, he was in a hard, tough fight. And that guy came, and, and his corner came to win. Simple yeah, as that. Definitely. Um, so it was a good live opponent. It was a good test. I told you everything you need to know. Sam's going onwards and upwards. And then for people who don't know, obviously Tramrock Promotions isn't just based in Norwich. You sort of cover boxes all over the country. So yeah, Absolutely. Um, there's two other names sort of on the poster that people will see and uh, Sajid Abid. Yeah, Sajid Abid um, comes from uh, Derby. He's trained by a very good friend of mine and coach. Uh, Asgatair, <clears throat> who's uh, been with the Fury camp for, for quite a while, so he, he's learned his trade. Um, he's, he's training Sajid. And uh, Jack ha uh, Jake Harrison and Jack Harrison, two brothers, um, we've just turned them professional hit them with the uh, Asgar up there in Derby as well. Right, okay. Um, Jake will be making his debut and, uh, very, very shortly in November, and um, J Jack will follow shortly. So. Yeah, they're, they're great prospects. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, um, heavyweight division is alive at the minute. Um, you know, you've got Tyson Fury with uh, his fight against Klitschko coming up. Um, you've got Joshua, you've got Dillian White. You've got some great domestic fights there, you know. And um, th these boys are just setting out on the career. But they're very good prospects. You know, J uh, Jake in particular. He's a former champion, ABA champion, you know, he's, he's won titles, he's used to it. He's a real powerhouse. Uh, gentleman Jake is his <laughs> boxing name. Uh, but let me tell you, he's no gentleman <laughs> in the ring. Uh, he's a powerhouse. So, so, yeah, good things to look forward to in that respect. So for anyone sort of in, in and around the Norwich area, they, to be able to see these people on a show here is, a, is an honour as such. It's, 
Absolutely, they're, they're... we believe in getting our boxers around. You know, some of the Norwich boys have boxed on my shows at Milton Keynes in York Hall in London. Um, we've just done, I must mention, a very, very successful show in Slough mm -hmm. uh, with John Brennan, who we've just um, taken on board. Um, <clears throat> and he became the British Classic belt winner down at, at, uh, yeah. at his home show in Slough. Great show, fantastic local show. Um, again, we're working there with um, uh, uh, Jim Evans, who's a brilliant trainer. You know, he's been around. I think he had something like 250 amateur fights <laughs> himself. You know, and he, he's been around forever in professional boxing. So he's got a great stable, and we're really pleased to be working with Jim and all the lads down there. You know, Sam Wall, Ian, Charlie, all the boys. Um, <clears throat> John is a delight to work with, and I think he'll go places. Um, so yeah, that's great. Nathan Graham, we've, we've just uh, missed out narrowly on a, um, an eliminator for, for Nathan, but he'll come back again from that. Again, it's good experience for him. He's a terrific boxer. Um, also, I've seen sort of yourself with um, Prince Patel, oh, pictures Prince, on yeah. online. Um, he's now joined the Shamrock stable, obviously, sort of still working with Frank Warren. Yeah, but, uh, Prince is promoted and uh, <clears throat> is with Frank Warren and um, he's come down and joined uh, the gym uh, down in Luton. He's now based and trained, training down there with um, with us. So we're training him up for his next fight, uh, which is on October the 30th, Friday coming. Um, so it's a great bill down in Harrow. Um, Frank Warren bill, Box Nation TV. So get yourselves down there, buy a ticket, get down. Um, Prince is a character, I suppose you want to know yeah. Prince. Well, Listen, Prince is a great character. Um, he's, he's brought the flyweight division alive, number one. Number two, behind the scenes, Prince trains harder than anybody I know. And he is an emerging talent, let me tell you, who will take that division by storm. Prince is actually a light flyweight. And right. he's fighting a division, at least, sometimes two divisions above him. Um, but it is what it is. Frank Warren's probably the best promoter um, certainly in this country, he knows how to make champions and, and he's got someone in Prince Patel that he will make a champion. Um, so, well, we'll have to see what the future holds for him. Absolutely, like. he's controversial, yeah. but listen, all the, the best boxers are. Um, they bring a bit of controversy, they bring a bit of charisma and uh, Prince has got that in bags, but one thing I'll tell you something, he's got talent. Um, when I first I was talking to him, I was like, uh, can this kid box? Is it all just shit talk? Uh, he's talked himself into a contract with Frank Warren. You know, has he pulled the wool over everybody's eyes? Can he actually fight? Yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> the answer is, is, is emphatically yes. He can box and he can fight. And uh, I'll put him in with some top people in this country um, sparring for this fight. You know, four weight champions, um, I don't want to mention names, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's more than held his own and on some occasions come off very, very much on top. That kid can fight and he can box. Watch out for him. So any, for anyone who's sort of watching this who isn't a boxing fan as such, the name Prince Patel is something that they, they need to look up and need to need so, to keep um, an eye on. <clears throat> Dare I say, it, when, when Prince Patel does an interview, he gets <laughs> multiple thousands yeah. of hits. Um, you know, the world pound for pound number one knew who Prince Patel was when he was interviewed and asked, do you know any boxers in England? He come up with Prince Patel, yeah. a two-fight <laughs> novice. So, listen, the guy's got something yeah. and he's getting it out there. That's fantastic. Um, touching on something else sort of with Shamrock yep. promotions and your gym, um, you do a bit of work with amateurs. Yeah, we've got an amateur club. We've had an amateur club down in Luton now for... Uh, 40 years, my father, who was a great amateur and professional uh, boxer, started the gym and then we've continued it. Um, father passed away sadly three years ago. Um, up until then, he was in the gym every day of the week. But yeah, we've got a great amateur club. We've, we've uh, got some young kids coming through there. We've got a few coming through now that will we'll turn over to, to be professionals. So listen, amateur boxing is where it all starts. Yeah. So 
Um, we will continue to support the amateur club. They do great work. Um, even, even the kids that don't come into professional boxing, it can turn their right lives around. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're the better for having been in the boxing club. So <clears throat> there's lots of reasons why we do it. Um, and we've got some great emerging talent, you know. Um, you sort of mentioned to me, um, and I've, I've, I'd seen online, and you sort of travelled to Ireland. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Recently, we went over to Ireland. We've got a we support male and female boxing. Um, it's, it's great to see, you know, both yeah. flourish. Um, we've got a, a boxer there, Viviana Tatila Castaldo. She was uh, she's a story in herself, to be quite honest yeah. with you. Um, she's a kid that that came into boxing. Um, travelled I think like two hours on the train to go to a boxing gym and two hours back home because she wanted to do she it. Went, yeah. So the strength of character was there right from day one. She won the Italian National Championships and then she moved over to England. She's won two English ABA champions, so she's a three-time national champion. Um, got a hand injury, was out for I think about 12 months. Came back, uh, went into the Irish uh, Celtic Box Cup went over there, um, beat the Irish champion, won every round, um, won a gold medal. So she's now focused on winning the ABAs again this year. Mm -hmm. And then who knows what the whole future yeah. holds, you know, whether she stays amateur or turns professional. The female boxing is on the up. Yeah. And uh, she's a great advocate and a great, great role model for female amateur boxing. Um, it seems as if you sort of you, you have a reign on many different things in the boxing world and something else that um, is now sort of becoming apparent is the the uh, Boxing Promoters Association belt. Oh, the, the Classic so, Challenge yeah, belt. Yeah, the Classic Challenge belt, uh, which you've had one winner um, last weekend, the weekend yes, before, and yep. then we've obviously got Joe now coming up fighting for it. Um, can you let us know a little bit more about where that started and what role you have? And yeah, it's... Um the Classic Challenge Belt, there's the British Classic Challenge Belt and the International Classic Challenge Belt. <clears throat> and they're really, although they will be used by bigger promoters, mm -hmm. they're really small hall boxing promotion belts. Yeah. Um, we <clears throat> were in discussion with the British Boxing Board of Control. Um, small hall boxing needs something to keep it alive. Um, we need something for the fans. We need something for prospects. Uh, and the other end of people's careers, you know, to actually win something. So we came up with the British Boxing Board of Control, and I have to thank them um, for their foresight uh, and willingness to work with small hall promoters for the good of boxing. Mm -hmm. And that's what that belt's about. Um, so it's, it's a small hall belt. Um, I think it's a great tool if used correctly. Um, since its introduction, um, about six weeks ago. Uh, it's been fought for five times already and next month uh, versions of that uh, belt will be fought for. I think we've got 11 booked in, right, um, okay. something like that. So it's very, very popular. We've got an eight round version of the belt and a 10 round uh, belt. Uh, and it's used by all, all of the promoters throughout the country and, and Northern Ireland, which is, is fantastic. Yeah. I'm, I'm chairman of the association. Um, as I say, we're working very closely with the British Boxing Board of Control. So yeah, it's, it's great for, for, for boxing. Well, there we go. We've uh, touched on everything, I think, today. <laughs> we, uh, um, the show's been talked about, which, again, 20th of November. That's going to be a good show. Yeah. The, the 20, listen, all the Norwich shows, they're just growing and growing and growing. And we're breeding champion after champion up here in Norwich. And it's, it's noticeable <clears> as well. Um, something that I said... The first time I, I watched the boxing at the halls, the lights are on. You come in this time, the lights are off. That sort of thing. It shows to show. The show's not only a building on fight-wise, but the, the whole show itself, the occasion is. The whole is. occasion. Listen, um, at the end of the day, Shamrock Promotions is about the event. Mm -hmm. We have to make the event right to get people coming through that door. You know, Give people a reason to come out. They, they, they work hard these days for their money. They don't have a, very little social time in today's yeah. society, which is a whole different subject. But, so you have to give them a reason to come out. 
and uh, just sticking a ring in a hall with, with a couple of lights and, and a couple of shit boxes ain't going to do it for them. No. So you have to have the quality in the matches, the quality of boxing, and the quality of the event. Give them a good experience, which is what we do at Shamrock, and they come back and you see that for yourself. We fill that place every single show. There we go. Shamrock Promotions, Mervyn Turner. More to come. More to Absolutely come. Absolutely, more so, to um, come. We're, we're working hard all the time, man, and uh, always a pleasure to see you, yeah, my friend. You too. And you see, do a great job, you guys. See, uh, see what happens in the new year. Brilliant. Thank see you. See you on the 20th. Cheers.